Graham, can you tell me um, why you would like to come and work at a, an international city law firm? Yeah, absolutely. So I think there's probably uh, three reasons. Uh, so first is, you know, I've obviously read that the firm has a lot of international offices, um, particularly in Asia and Europe. And so you know, I'm really interested in working abroad in the future. So I think that would be really exciting. Uh, I think the second reason I'm really interested in, in business, as you know, I'm studying um, economics and law. I'm really interested in understanding the economy and different industries um, and how different businesses work. And so I think it would be, be really exciting to work at a, uh, at a company that, that does transactions and that buys and sells things. So I think that would be really you know, interesting. And then, so the third reason is, um, you know, I'm a very competitive uh, and high-performing person, and I think that it would be, you know, really exciting to to work in a in a full-on and intense environment. This was a bad answer, um, and unfortunately, it, it, there were aspects of it that we do hear in interview. For somebody who works in an international legal environment the last thing you want to hear is that somebody wants to come and work with you so they can work abroad. That answer fails to recognise what is the real international element of our work, which is the multi-jurisdictional aspect. The other weakness in this answer was that whilst Graham plainly has commercial awareness, he didn't give me any insight as to why he wants to work in a legal environment as opposed to some other form of commercial or financial environment. So Ali, um, can you tell me a bit about why you'd like to work at an international city law firm, why that career appeals to you? Yes, well um, I think that I, it was after I attended a negotiation workshop at my university college um, and it was a combination of having a very intellectually stimulating case study, so we were dealing with a fictional energy client, there were multi-jurisdictional legal issues which was challenging to get my head around, not only because I'm a non-law student, but I think I enjoyed that aspect of it. And then we were separated into teams and we had to um, think of a strategy to be used at um, an alternative dispute resolution session. And I enjoyed working together and thinking how we could best present our client's case. Um, and I was also fortunate to have the opportunity to practice my advocacy skills by then negotiating against the other side. Um, so the combination of teamwork, but also very intellectually challenging work is what's attracted me to working in a, an international city law firm. I thought this was a good answer. Um, she immediately sold herself to me as a strong candidate. She had plainly prepared the type of answer she was going to give, but I think that's fine. We, we want candidates who've prepared. Um, and what I particularly liked about her answer was that she had thought about her own personal experience doing something law related and then articulated very clearly what she liked about it and how it played to her strengths. What is it about your own personal characteristics do you think that would make you well suited to this career? What, what is your particular strength? There are two things. Um, firstly, I often receive feedback from academic tutors or students I work with as part of my extracurricular activities that um, I'm a very enthusiastic team member. Um, so I think this is important um, to bring to a team because it galvanizes other team members and also brings energy um, and motivation when dealing with particularly challenging tasks. Um, but I also think it means that I'm motivated um, when I have to work by myself. Um, and secondly, I enjoy problem solving. And I think that particularly working in an international city law firm, the emphasis on finding a reasonable commercial solution is obviously very important. And I enjoy um, applying my mind in this way. With this type of question, we're really looking for two things. One is some degree of personal insight and self-awareness. And the other thing we're looking for is um, an understanding of how you would work in a professional environment, what skills you have that would make you suited for a particular job. Um, and I thought Ali answered this on both fronts really quite well. She talked about um, her own characteristics and showed insight into herself, but she'd also thought about how she would demonstrate those in a professional environment. James, what skills do you have that you think would make you well suited to being a city solicitor? I think there are two key skills which would make me well suited to a career as a commercial solicitor. Firstly, I've got strong analytical skills which have been developed in part through studying economic and financial history 
For example, I've, I've learned to analyse a factual narrative and pick out the salient facts from it and construct a persuasive argument from it. Secondly, I think I've got strong practical commercial skills. So for example, at university I was the books editor of my student newspaper. And I also sat on the editorial board. And historically the newspaper had been loss making. And um, it was funded in part through a grant from the Students' Union, in part through a grant from the university itself, but also from advertising revenue. And in the aftermath of the global financial crisis, advertising revenue dipped. I became aware of this and I sat down with a colleague to think, you know, what could we do to, to attract more advertisers and to bring in more money for the paper and to try and expand it and develop our offering? And so we sat down and we thought, what do we have that we can sell? What are people willing to pay for? And so firstly, it was a free paper. It had a very wide circulation throughout the university. It was well read. And so it gave advertisers access to highly educated and motivated students between the ages of 19 and 25, which was something of, of value. And secondly, it also gave companies who wanted to attract bright graduates into their companies the opportunity to target these, um, these graduates. So what we did is we, we used LinkedIn to identify university alumni at various target companies and approach them and ask if they would want to advertise in our newspaper. We also offered a more bespoke service. Um, so we gave companies the opportunity to sponsor articles um, and we provided links at the bottom of the articles to their graduate recruitment web pages. And often I think at university people often turn up to careers fairs and they, they think, oh, it's a great idea applying for this, to work for this company. They go home and they forget about it. But actually we're able to present to companies a relatively compelling offering of having a link at the bottom of a newspaper article, which means that a student who would otherwise forget about the opportunity instead would um, have the opportunity to submit an application there and then. James had plainly prepared for answering this type of question. I also thought he answered it very well in terms of having thought about both his academic ability for the job and identifying what it is about his studies that would place him well for law, and I thought he got that spot on. He also introduced some real commercial awareness, which again is very important. Where he probably let himself down a bit though was by going on with his example for a bit too long and perhaps in a bit too much detail. If you had to identify one character weakness about yourself, what would it be? I suppose one character weakness I have is that I get, I get bored quite easily. So for example, at university we have lots of lectures on, on history and some of them are on modules which you didn't necessarily choose or the lecturer isn't particularly interesting and they can go on for very long and the lecturers are often quite monotonal and don't deliver it in a particularly interactive way. So also in seminars at university, if somebody is presenting on a topic and it's obvious they haven't done their homework or they, you know, they've been out the night before, then you know, it can be quite easy to turn off from that. So I suppose that, that's a weakness I have. Um, another weakness is I, I have a tendency to be quite late um, for things, which is something I, I suppose I've had ever since I was a child. And I've, you know, I've tried to address it from time to time. And I, sometimes it, it gets better, but uh, I suppose that's, that's also a weakness. This was not a strong answer from James. I don't think that he had prepared for the question. I also don't think that he, on the spot, thought about either what we were looking for or how his answer would come across. So he failed to demonstrate real personal insight. And he also gave me two examples of attributes that would make me quite concerned as an employer. And didn't demonstrate enough awareness as to how he might remedy those uh, characteristics. Tell me about how you would appraise a, a character weakness that you think you have. I think uh, uh, I'm a very you know, energetic and enthusiastic person. You know, I like to take on a lot of work and throw myself into to new challenges. Um, and so I think the weakness there is that sometimes I tend to take on too much work or I tend to launch into an activity without necessarily thinking about is, is this the best way? Um, so an example would be um, I was taking a, a politics course at university and um, I had a research essay to do. You know, I got the topic and I was really uh, interested and I thought, okay, I'll launch into it. You know, I spent most of the weekend uh, researching the question. And then sort of later in the week when I look back at what I'd done, 
I sort of realized that, you know, despite my enthusiasm, I hadn't really nailed it and quite a lot of my effort had been wasted. And so then I sort of made me realize that, um, you know, sometimes by rushing in, because I'm, I'm enthusiastic, um, it might not necessarily be the best use of my time or energy. And so um, it's something I'm conscious of having to manage and think about whenever I'm thinking about doing something. This was an acceptable answer. It's always a bit worrying when a candidate starts talking about um, taking too much on and um, not necessarily being focused in how he approaches tasks. But I think the way that Graham um, sort of rescued this answer was by placing that weakness in the context of a strength. So he, both in his presentation and also in his content, he really sold himself to me as being enthusiastic and keen to get involved and take on uh, matters and, and interests. And he placed his weakness in terms of taking on too much quite nicely in the context of that strength. Um, and he also demonstrated some self-awareness uh, that he's able to articulate uh, that weakness and by reference to an actual example. Do you think you're a robust person? Absolutely. And I think that um, through my experiences of making the jump from school to university, as many people do, but also by managing the multiple demands on my time that I have at the moment through being on the events committee at my university college, um, also being a member of a German literary interest group and also managing personal demands all alongside my academic career, I think that I have developed resilience, um, but it's something I'm wear very aware of. And I think that going into a challenging profession such as law, um, this will be something I'll need to continue thinking about consciously. So for example, if I'm given many tasks as a trainee solicitor, I think that I'll need to be robust in managing my own capacity, say, and knowing when to say no and knowing when it might be difficult for me to achieve a task in accordance with um, a certain person's demands. So developing the confidence to be honest about that is something that I'm aware will be important once I'm a trainee solicitor. When we ask questions about whether somebody is robust or how they deal with pressure, we're looking for both an example, we, we like personal examples, but I also am looking for the candidate to articulate how they react um, at, at almost at an emotional level. And Ali's answer, whilst um, telling me that she does a lot of things and that she has a lot of interests, which is important, didn't really respond on the uh, emotional insight. And I felt that was lacking in this answer. Do you think you're a natural leader or are you more of a follower? I think it's difficult to put yourself firmly into the follower or the leader camp. I definitely show, um, think that when I've had to show leadership skills that I've, you know, I could demonstrate examples. For example, at school, I was captain of my, of my school rugby team. Um, but having said that, I've participated in a number of, of team sports, playing football, for example, and rugby. But one example of, of leadership, um, where I think that I sort of rose to the occasion, was on a, a British Exploration Society trip to Arctic Norway. And um, there were 40 of us, um, and we were divided into four groups of, of 10 people, each called a fire. And in my group of 10 people, we were from quite different backgrounds. People had different motivations for being there. Some people were going to be joining the army. Um, other people were there more or less or more of a holiday. Other people wanted to relish the, the physical aspects of the trip. And so I was elected leader of my fire, and it was my job to try and bond all these disparate people together and try and ensure that, you know, while inevitably there will be cliques to some extent, that people have a, a sort of a, sh a sense of, of shared purpose and a shared goal to, to rally around. And one example of that is when we were sea kayaking. And as you can imagine, sea kayaking is quite a physically arduous activity. So there was a group who often wanted to race out in front and explore the different fjords. And there was a group who were quite happy sort of paddling along at their own speed and sort of didn't like seeing the other half of the group race off into the horizon. So the way I dealt with that was to, to paddle with the, um, with the slower group at the back and try and engage them in conversation and take their mind off the fact that, you know, we were going at a fair pace and it was quite a physically arduous activity. 
and I asked my deputy leader to paddle with the advance group um, and just try to make sure they didn't go off too far into the, into the, into the distance. And at the start of the day, we would, we would examine the map and, and look, was there anywhere on the way where perhaps the advance group could go and amuse themselves while the other groups caught up, etc. So it's a case of really sort of trying to plan and trying to create a, a, sh a sense of shared purpose. This was a thoughtful response from James, and I thought it was strong for two reasons. Firstly, he had, I think, prepared for and given thought to what we as an employer would look for in a leadership skill and, and as a team player. He also answered the question by reference to a personal experience. And in doing that, both was able to answer the question with some specificity, but also took the opportunity to give me some interesting background and fact about himself, which is always interesting. We see a lot of students coming through the door for interviews um, and they can be both law students and also non-law students. And I think it's important, particularly for, for non-law students, to understand that what we're looking for in our interview candidates is not just an academic ability and, and strength at law, because of course not all candidates will have that, but proper academic strength and also an ability to apply their learning in a commercial context. And I think that can be demonstrated to us um, in, in two or three ways. The first is to be able to demonstrate and talk about their real motivation for, for working in a commercial legal environment. And that means, I think, thinking specifically about what a lawyer or solicitor does, as opposed to somebody in another professional business role. The second is to think about their own personal strengths and characteristics uh, and also their weaknesses. What is it about that candidate as an individual that is selling itself to me such that I want to offer them the role as opposed to somebody else? And the third point, we want to know about the candidate as a person. So the more that they can talk about their own personal experience and how they have behaved in a particular circumstance, the stronger the answer.